we left off yesterday that Rashi learns that by Yibum, by Yibum, that if a minor performs Yibum, that since Yibum doesn't need Das, needs no intent, on the Torah level, it becomes his wife. However, in regard to the liability of committing adultery, there's no liability of death penalty. It is ish is ish, meaning, but it's not ish to be liable for the death penalty. We'll discuss that in a minute. Why? We'll discuss the case in a minute. Tosa disagrees. When the Torah says ish is ish, will ish is cotton? Because you would think that since if he commits adultery with another woman, as a minor who is 10 years old, it's considered an act of adultery, that would be sufficient to create marriage. No, it's nothing. So those souls, it's nothing. Nothing whatsoever. It does take effect at any level. No, it's not a valid yibum. No. But how do I know it's not a valid yibum? Because the Torah says, I would have thought maybe there is an Ashish Koton, because you see that a child who's nine years old who cohabits with a married woman. He, she has liability, right? I think so. Where you need no das is by yibum. Maybe sh- sh- it should be a valid yibum. There's no such thing as ashes koton. It doesn't exist. It's nothing. Tosa says it's nothing. Rashi says no. It is something, but because it's the wife of a minor, a w- for committing adultery with a wife of a minor, there's no liability death penalty. Why? Right? That's what the Torah is telling us. Despite the Every fact that his act is an act of cohabitation, an and you ha- and you need no das, you need no intent so by yibum, means nothing. Means nothing. The the woman is still bound. But the woman remains bound. To bound is bound for yibum. It has not been fulfilled. Nothing has happened. Nothing has happened whatsoever. Nothing has happened. That's tosis. It excludes. So the question, what is the exclusion? What does it exclude? saying. According to Rashi, it minimizes the, the liability. Even though she's a married woman, but it does not have the liability of the wife of an adult, which is the death penalty. Okay? Tosa says, no. I would have thought it's considered a wife. Why? Because I see his act of cohabitation as an act. And in this context, you need no intent, because he even does need intent. Tosa says, no. Aceous cotton because there is no aceous cotton. There's no such thing as the wife of a, of a minor. How does he prove it? Because the Morris says in Yavamis that he only inherits, inherits her on a rabbinic level. And if he's a Kohen, she's not permitted to eat truma. Right? She's not permitted to eat truma. So Tos says, you see clearly, it's, it's, it, it's, not, it's not valid. Why is she bound to the minor? Rabbinical. The reason why the other brothers cannot. Correct. 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 That's so. Tosa says why? Because it's nobody, nothing. Nobody agrees, nobody disagrees with that. That's the Gemara. That's that's yeah. Tosa's difficulty with Rashi, right? right? But if if if, if, if his wife, why shouldn't she eat truma? And what is the inheritor if she dies? He should inherit. It's his wife. So evidently, the answer is because it's all rabbinical, right? It's all rabbinical. That's that's Tosa's, and it's a Gemara. It's rabbinical. Correct, 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 correct. That, that's Tosin. So we'll answer, we'll see how to, how to, how to answer Rashi. <coughs> but we have an argument. So when it says, Aceous of Aceous Cotton is only minimizing the liability, or is it no? The Torah tells me it's nothing. There's no such thing as the wife of a cotton. So now there's a Shail Lahalocha. According to Rashi, what happens now? He performs Yibum when he's a cotton. So she's his wife. Now he becomes an adult. Okay, now she commits adultery. What is the liability? Interesting, Shiloh. It's a machalux we've shown him. We'll see. If they're married. No, 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 no. No, 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 no. According to Rashi. According to us, it's understood. It's nothing. And they're married. If it's that, that, that simple, I wouldn't bring it up. Okay, we'll discuss it. We'll discuss it. We'll discuss it. 
She's nothing. She's a single woman. Yeah, she's. But, she uh, get a chalitza. but, uh, but a, a woman doesn't chalitza is not. It's not considered adultery. Oh, it's, it's a Torah violation. It's a love. It's a lo sase. It's a lo sase. So she, everyone will agree at least. Minimally, that that she's Minimally. definitely she's not. Okay. But the question is here. She according to Rashi that she is the wife. She was the wife of the cotton. Now he becomes an adult. Says Aishas Aishalishas cotton. Well, now he's not a cotton. So he said, today maybe she we should she should be classified as Aishas Ish. Today she's the wife of an adult. So if that's the case, definitely she'd be liable. No, no other act. If he performed that, there's no question. No, he didn't cohabitate with her when he became an adult. The only act he did was when he was a minor. Now he becomes an adult. So that we say, this woman today, you say, who, she's the wife of who? He's an adult today? Definitely. Right? Did you have liability death penalty? Like any act of adultery. Or do we say no? Some Rishonim explain that it, why Why? Because the effect of a cotton's action doesn't bring about a full status of marriage. She's not a full, she's, it's like, giving the example, it's not exactly, it's not the same. We have Erison, we have Nesuin. Erison, she's married. But let's say, let's talk about Naira Morosa. A, a girl is 12 years old, and she's a virgin, she commits adultery. What's the liability? Skila. If there's full marriage, <coughs> same, same woman, it's, it's Chenek. Not a Basco. Chenek. Chenek is a lesser liability. But it's different. Why? So with the friendship between part, not partially married, even though she's married, and fully married. So the Rishonim learned that a minor cannot marry a woman that the effect of his act causes to be fully his wife. So it, it's not a full ishus. So because it, that's what Torah says, ishus, ish with ishus koton. Because a koton cannot bring about the marriage to the extent that an adult can bring about. about. Okay? His action, his act is minimized. This, she's a wife, so if that's the case, even though he becomes an adult today, she's still a shiskotum. Because we're talking about not who she's married to, but who did the initial act of Yibu. So that this itself is a machlokus we've shown him. It's a machlokus, it's an argument. Okay, good. Let, let, let's talk. Good, good, good. Good. Wait, wait. Let's go. Let's talk. So there's no beauty. He wants to he cites a Rambam. He cites a Rambam. The Rambam rules that a child who commits, who performs evil after he's nine years old, okay, and he doesn't cohabit again with them when he becomes an adult, what does she need when, if he, if he wants to end the relationship? So he says, the Rambam says she needs a get and she needs chalitza. Two things. Get and Chalitza. Wait, 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 wait. So, the, so good. So the note of deduces from the Rambam that the get is do raiso. The get is do raiso. Do raiso. Why? Because the Rambam says like this. He classifies the wife of a cher shot of a koto. The wife of dif different types of people. There he says that if they go and they cohabit with someone, they get Marcus Marus. Me rabbinic lashes, because it's not a marriage on a Torah level, because they're, they're incompetent people, right? Cheres shota, cheres shota. What about a cotton who's nine years old and forms yibum? Ram says also, he will get, she will get, the person will get makas marus, not the, the death penalty. But that's all he says. So the note of you says they should all be classified at the same level. If the act of a child is nothing whatsoever, you should say, if a woman, Yibam is performed by the Cheresh, Shota, and Koton, Marcus Marus. What does the Ramam uh, classify as two separate cases? Cheresh, Shota, then he says Koton. Right? They, they, none of them have Das. Well, I understand that, but, but he's making a differentiation. Making a differentiation over here. Okay? So he wants to deduce from the Rambam. You see, the cotton's, the cotton's effect is a different effect than the Chev Shoter. Right? A cotton, at this presently, he's not a Bardas. 
but he has relevance to that. His classification is he's a normal person. He's he's a, he's a minor. Cheshot to a permanent state. That that's not changing. So he wants to say see from the Rambam that on a Torah level it is. However, it's limited. The effect is a limited effect. So to give the death penalty, one doesn't have the death penalty. So if it's limited, so if Lawi wants to divorce when she's an adult, well, he doesn't do another act of cohabitation with her. So get she needs, because to sever whatever that limited effect was. But yet since he, it wasn't a full effect, you still need the Chalitza to what? Because she didn't become his full wife. So you need the Chalitza to terminate the connection to the past husband. The Raisa. Right. The get is the Raisa, and the Chalitza is the Raisa. Right, right. But this is what he deduces from the Rambam. No, it's too late. It's his wife. It's the minor's wife. There's no liability of adultery. But the, why does it need to take, why does, does that full marriage, that's a full... What's full marriage? You, you can't have full marriage. No, you can't have full marriage because he already, she's married, she's married to, the, to the minor. She's the minor's wife. No, 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 no. No. They have no, it's gone. They're out of the picture, right. No, because it's part of it, because it wasn't fully taken over. No, no, but if the reason, the reason, why does a woman need Chalitza? Wait, 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 wait. She needs Chalitza in order to free the other brothers and herself. Why is there a bond? Why is she bound to the brothers? Because the first husband's, what he, his, effect to her hasn't wasn't terminated so because this somebody who could take over that relationship therefore she's not permitted to anyone else so let's say that relationship is taken over 95 percent by the mind a mind who's able to take over 95 percent of that but five percent of what the brother had brought about is still hasn't been attended to so for that five percent that has to be terminated that can only be terminated through chalitza yet cannot terminate that Yet can only terminate what a person created himself. So to the effect that he was miyabing the cotton, so therefore that he has to give a get. For the 5%, which was not covered, because he was a minor, that you need chalitza. So let's go down this path. So let's suppose that this this <coughs> got a get, but she didn't give chalitza. Could the other brother perform? No, 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 no. Why? Because the only person who could take it over, you have to have 100% taking over. The brother has to take over 100% because it's, it's Eish Yisrochiv. No. Leave from yes, def they definitely they're relieved. They, they have, they're not permitted. It would be considered an act of incest. Because today, she's the wife of the, the minor brother. No, Doesn't make a difference. A man divorces his wife. The brother's not permitted to marry his divorcee. But, 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 the forces of Khalid but I'm explaining to you. I'm explaining to you. No, that's only if she's fully open to be take, to become his wife. This woman cannot become his wife okay. because she's the wife of, of the person who was the minor. She was. Doesn't make but but a, a, a brother who divorces his wife. The, the brother is not permitted to marry that woman. No, it's it's kores. It's it's one of incestuous relationships. So that she has no relevance. They have no relevance to this woman any longer. The what, what's in the domestic? The, the living brother has to give her Correct. So now you ask me a question. What if another brother would give her the chalitza? That would be a question. If the other brother would give a chalitza, would it be an effective chalitza? No, 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 no. The major, no. Today the minor is also major. After the get, let's say a third brother would give the chalitza. Would, would it be valid? It's not simple. Not simple. Not simple. Not simple. Because today she's a woman who's not permitted to him any longer. Because today she's Aisha Sochiv. Or do we say that since that little bit that's left has to do with the original brother, maybe he is qualified to terminate that. I'm not sure. And what if this boy wants to, they don't sever the marriage with the same minor? Can that be done? The minor can't give a get. Neither, neither, neither. Neither, he can't do either. A minor can't give a get and a minor can't give chalitza. So they're stuck. 
until until he becomes an adult. Exactly, exactly. Right. So that's the question. So the question is, do we say Aishis Kotura, Aishis Ishlo, Aishis Koton, that because his effect is limited, or no, his effect is a full effect, except his exerza Kosov, that you're not liable if you commit adultery with the wife of a minor. So now that he's no longer a minor, so now it's a regular adultery, she's Aishis Ish. So that itself is a question. How to understand this position? But Groin Tosov wouldn't even get involved in this, right? It's nothing. It's totally. It's meaningless. No, no, no. You need to get rabbinically. Rabbinically, you need to get. Rabbinically, you need to get a quantitosis. Because it looks, since in regard to adultery elsewhere, we value the act. So you would say this is an act of yibum, right? It's only appearance. One second. So now the question is, how do we learn the Machlokas, Rashi, and Tosus? Good. The Gemara is based on the Gemara, but, but in, the, in, the, in the concept. Rashi says, if Yibum doesn't need Das, so why sh- and the act of the minor is an act of cohabitation. Why, why isn't the Yibum a Yibum? She should be his wife. Right? Tosus says, no, it's not. So what exactly is the Machlokas? So I just began speaking about this yesterday. His title explains it this way, that... The question is, although this particular act doesn't need intent, but the fact is, it's only a person who is a person who has intent, he's qualified to marry a woman. Although in this, when the Torah says, Eishas Ish, lo Eishas Koten means, a wife can only be taken by the person who's classified as a bardas. No, 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 no. I understand that, I understand that. So because... He's not classed as bar das. He has no relevance to marriage. Not because, if you say the reason why is because marriage needs das. So here you don't need you don't need intent. So if you don't need intent, so she can become his wife. Tosis says no. The only person who could marry is a bar das, is a person of intent. So although in this particular situation one doesn't need ten, intent, but he's not classified as a person of intent. So if that's the case, he has no relevance to bring about marriage. That's the Machlokas Rashi and Tosas. What exactly is the Torah saying? When it says, Eishas Ish Velo Eishas Koton. Is it saying that only it's, a li- it's only limiting the liability because you don't need Das? Or is the Torah saying no? That since he's not a Bar Das, he has no relevance to marriage. Therefore the marriage is nothing. That's the argument of Rashi and Tosas. How to understand the Xer Sarkosov. No, no, it's not. It's not marriage. It hasn't been performed. It hasn't been performed. No, the mitzvah of yibum is that the wo- the widow should become the wife of the surviving brother. The wife of the surviving brother. It wasn't real yibum. He was a father-in-law. It's a semblance. There, it was basically the act of yibum that occurred. That is, that she. Right, but factually, uh, but there was no marriage. When the act took place, Prisinai, the, well, what is marriage? Well, marriage is when you 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 plan to be together right. you, as husband yeah. and wife. So okay, you, it was just a sexual act. Turned out to be what his daughter-in-law. Rabbinically, rabbinically, he's not. We see, we see the woman as the wife of the cotton. Rabbinically, correct, correct, correct. But ha- but no, the, the brothers are not bound to her. The brothers can do whatever they want. She's the one who has the problem. The brothers have so good. So she has to, she has to wait till he becomes an adult, and then either he does either he does another act of cohabitation or he gives a chalitza, one or the other. Yeah. I just want to mention, but how does Rashi answer Tosis? Yeah. So they cite, there's a Ramban on that Gemara that the Ramban says, on a Torah level, she what? It's his full wife. He inherits her, everything else, and she's permitted to eat truma. But because he's a minor, and under normal circumstances, a minor, his action has no value, 
therefore rabbinically they minimize the effect on a Torah level it's, it's full it's a full marriage he performed Yibam no, because, because on the normal circumstances a minor's action is nothing because it could be confused yeah. no it's, it's if a, a minor normally cohabits with a woman in marriage what is it it's nothing right so here we find that there's something so people have to understand the difference between Yibam and not Yibam so you know what we say on a Torah level we say it's not considered a marriage rabbinically it's a rabbinic Not, no, 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 no. On the note, is an act of a minor something anywhere else? No. Nothing. Okay? Also, oh, we think that in the marriage that... that, that right. So therefore, so therefore, they minimized it. But on a Torah level, she's Eishas Ish. She's Eishas Kotum. Well, that, that is a question. That, that, no, that's because these in the, even the question of Rashi. When he says she's his wife on a Torah level, is it a full wife or is it a partial wife? This, it's not, that's not clear from the Ramban. From the Ramban, that's not clear. The Ramban is saying it's a Torah marriage. To what degree? So when the Torah says, Velo is it, does it mean to say it's a full marriage except there's no liability because she's the wife of a cotton? Or do we say no? The reason why there's no liability because the effect of the cotton on a Torah level has limitation. No, that's, that's an argument. We don't know. In Rashi, it could go either way. There's no, it's not clear from Rashi. From Rashi, there's no limit. And, and, and she's allowed to inherit. No, yeah. eating Truman out. Wait, what? That's what you just said. No, in, in, inheriting. Inheritance. And Truman. You said that she can eat the Truman. No, she, she can't eat the Truman. No, she cannot eat the Truman. She cannot eat the Truman because it's only a rabbinical marriage. That's why she cannot eat the truma. No, no. On a Torah level, Raisa. she can eat the truma. That's what I'm saying. Nidal Raisa, the Ramban says, she can eat truma and she inherits. Correct. Okay. Yet you see no indication that there's a deficiency in the marriage whatsoever. It's got all the properties of marriage. Well, well, well good. Maybe for a wife to eat the truma, maybe even to be a partial wife, that she, that's sufficient to eat the truma. She's called Aisha's Kohen. Right? Even though the effect wasn't 100%, that's, she's still called Aisha's Kohen. Right, you don't see any of the on, on a Torah the level? The same, the you don't know. Maybe she would still need Chalitza. She would need a get and Chalitza on a Torah level if he doesn't have another act of cohabitation when he becomes an adult. That you don't see. You don't see that. What? No. Right. Okay, let's go further. Little, f we're holding over here. My Haviyalo. So we had a sh question: Could a father be miyayid, the maidservant to a son, if he's a minor? A man purchases a maidservant. He's not interested in marrying her. He has a minor son. Could he marry off his son, the maidservant to the son, even as a minor? So if he marries off as a minor, what is the Torah saying? That just as he can marry off his daughter as a minor. He can marry son. That means the son is in the jurisdiction of the father in regard to marriage, right? Toshma. So we, we haven't resolved it yet. Toshma. Omer Avevo, Omer Avyanaik, and Yir El Begodol. Here it says, Yir only has relevance to an adult. Here it's right over here, about halfway down. Omer Avyanaik, Omer Avevo, Omer Avyanaik, and Yir El Begodol, and Yir El Midas. Yir only has relevance to an adult and only when there's intent. So the question is, what is it? I mean, he's saying the same thing, right? But it seems to be two different things. Only if it's an adult, so if adult means not, not a minor. And it means only with intent, so again, it can't mean the minor. So what are we saying? So Mars is What are you saying? What two things are we speaking about? And Mars says, no, Matam Kumar. What he's explaining, he's giving you the reason why it must be an adult. Why must they be an adult and not a minor? Why could you not have, why is it only have relevance to an adult? Since Yud is only when there's intent, and since the minor 
cannot have the intent. Therefore, when the Torah speaks about Yehud, we're speaking only of the son who's an adult. Okay? That's Rabbi Yanai. Rabbi Yanai. Ibo Seymour. Just backing up the adult part. Of this. He's giving us the understanding why he must, why? Be, a, why he must be an adult. Ibo Seymour. My das. What does it mean, das? Midas di do. Now, normally when a father marries off a minor, correct? What does he need? Does he have to consult with her on a Torah level? He doesn't have to consult with her. Even he doesn't consult with her, even though the Gemara is going to say at the beginning of the second paragraph, if she's old enough to be able to say yes or no, you should ask her. As we learned by Rivka, right? Her parents said to her, are you interested? Even though she was a minor, you should ask her. That's Vavtodrechokamocha. But what happens if you don't ask her? It's a valid marriage. What about by you? The Omevriya. The Omevriya is under the jurisdiction of the master. When he marries her, does he have to inform her, I'm marrying you? Or he just cohabits with her? He could tell witnesses, you know, I'm marrying her, and he cohabits with her. He has to inform her that he's marrying her. So, which means there's going to transition from servitude to marriage. No, you don't need consent, but he just has to inform her. He has to inform her that he's marrying her. Why? We'll see in a moment. We'll see in a moment. No, not offense. No, 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 no. She's a minor. She doesn't know the difference. Meaning, we don't reckon with her in terms of halachic intelligence. It's not because she's agreeable or disagreeable. It has nothing to do with this. The Torah says, because we'll see in a moment, we had an argument before with what is he marrying the maidservant? With the original money that he received, that he gave, or with the remainder of the servitude? So if it's the remainder of servitude, the Torah says, since you're marrying her, with the time that's left, which is a sh minimally a Shavit Pruta, so now she has to be made aware that he's converting, the father's out of the picture. Wait, no, she's not a free woman. She's not a free woman. She's a wife. She's no longer a maidservant. But, but again, because there's a transition, the, the meaning, the value now is going from servitude into marriage. If the original money was given as marriage, there's, there's, there's no transition any longer, right? The money was given. He has full rights. He, if that's the case, he doesn't have the money at all. But if you hold most achronis konos, that's, it's the ba remainder of the servitude, which has value. So he has to inform her that right now there's a transition from servitude to marriage, because now the value has been given to you as in marriage. She, she, no, she's. She, she's, she, it's not she's Kona. It's like the, the that that you no longer have to fulfill your obligation as a as a maidservant. You've been given your freedom that you no longer my asset. Like we had earlier, every every we had earlier every every goof If a man says to an every every every, I I I I forgive the debt. He's not free, right? He's not free. He has to receive a. A shtar shikra, a writ of emancipation. Right? We had it earlier. You owe me money, I say, I waived the debt, you no longer owe the money. So although he agreed that the Ebed Ivri initially to work for, some, the Torah says, for six years, so it's a debt, right? Saying, I waive it, it's no more, because when he sells himself into slavery, or he sold into slavery, you have an innate interest in the person himself. So that has to be released. How do you release it? You release it through the get, the get sheikh or the writ of emancipation. So over here, he has an innate interest in her. So he's returning to her, he's releasing her from that, that he's giving up that interest and he's converting it to marriage. No, but that's, but that proclamation converts servitude into marriage. No, no, not, but she has to be informed. Purely, there's a cause of she has to be informed. No, 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 no. She, she, she has thus. She has thus. She has thus. Not, she doesn't have halachic intelligence. When you speak to her, she understands what you're saying. So the Torah says, in regard to this, that's sufficient. She has to be informed that there's a transition from servitude into marriage. There's a cause of. 
because it says, that's what it says, Yud, Asher lo yodo, im b'no yod then, it's, it, she has to be, she has to be told that she, she's having Yud. That's what the Torah is saying. Well, the Gemara is going to say in a moment, this is only according to the opinion that most Achronos, that's it's the what balance which brings, but according to the... I'm, I'm going down that track. If that is the only way to understand it, that, it, it's, that she has to be released from the remainder of her service, then she is calling herself. something. She's calling herself okay. as a free woman. But Okay, you don't have to be calling. You are that. It's not an acquisition. The absence of of ownership automatically means you're a free person. You understand? Well, first the Torah. The Torah. First, if you hold dasacharis makne, it's, it's easy. If you learn like Tos, we discussed, right? If you want to give a minor a gift, is it a valid gift on the Torah level? Yes. Why? Dasachers Magnus. And it's so why is it worse than Dasachers Magnus? Right? I have an interest in you. I said, now my interest is yours. So she, this is her. So if she takes something in her hand and I say, the gift I give you is yours, it's hers. So if the gift I'm giving her is herself. Definitely it's, it, it, it's hers. Right? She assumes that independent right. No, there's something else. It's and not a valid marriage. I'm giving you a gift, thus, as I toast this Good, good. Okay. He can do that all day long and nothing is Why? Happening. Not because the gift is not hers. Because she has to have intent to become married. But here, she doesn't need intent to be married. The Torah says if the money is given to marriage and she's made aware of that, marriage takes place. But she has to receive it. So how does she receive it? That that's no worse than Das Achers Machne. No, 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 no. The co- no, we're going one now. He owns her. What the father sold was 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 ownership as a master, not marriage. The money was not given in ma- for marriage. Understood, but there's still a yield involved there. If when you sell someone, it's just a, 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 every other. But it has nothing to do with the money. That's a right he has. He has the, right the Torah gives, but who gives right. him that right? Not the father. Not the father. The Torah gives the right. Okay, fine. So there is that right of you. As soon as so what? So Therefore, what? what? She's given up that ability. To She's given up ability. nothing. She's given up nothing. She never had anything. She's a minor. The father has given up his right. Correct. By selling your daughter to servitude, your father has given up his right to marry his daughter. Okay, that's over. During the six year period. The Torah, the, the Torah transfers the right. Right. Now, the Torah says, if now the owner, if he wants to exercise the right to marry her, and he gives her something, she becomes his wife. The Torah says, being a Jewish master of a maidservant gives you the right to marry the minor. Right. Gives you. Right. But not the father. When you gave the money, the father gave you that right. right. Correct. It's okay. So you just ask the former. My my interest, I'm transferring to you. It's like giving a minor a gift. Except here, you, when you give the gift, you say it's a marriage. Although her, her intent means nothing in regard to the marriage aspect. So her, really no other value other than the man that you are not my wife. Exactly, exactly, exactly. That's all it is. Exactly. No, because he has to convert it. It's yes. a conversion here. Yes, yes. He's converting it from servitude into marriage. But no, no, she has to hear it. She has to hear it. Because she has to be told she's no longer a marriage servant. That's what the Torah says. That, that, causes, that causes the conversion. I don't, what's so no, difficult? I don't understand why that's important. Can I ask you a question? Okay. No, 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 no. If I want to give a minor a gift, and she's sleeping, and I put it in her hand, I say, I'm giving you the gift, and she doesn't hear the words. What does that mean? Is it hers? Das hers magne? No, of course not. Why? Let her be deaf. Because there, her halachic intelligence is not necessary. But she has to be aware that she's been given a gift. That the act should be classified as an act of acquisition. 
You following? Yeah. So here, if she would say, I want, I'm, I'm agreeable to, to marry you, that, that's meaningless what you're agreeable. Yeah. Yeah. But she, it's, if it's a dasher smakne, he's giving it to her, he's converting servitude into marriage, she has to be made aware of that, that she's been given that. But if she's so, let's say she's, she's three days old, it means nothing. Because the words mean, it's like she's sleeping. But we don't need the halachic das, but you need an awareness. Under normal circumstances, in this context or in, in, like elsewhere. Just that you're aware what's happening. The das of it means only that you're being made aware what's happening. I informed. Here das means informed. No, normally das means intent. Normally under normal circumstances, das means intent. Here does not mean intent. It means you're being informed that the transitions take place from servitude to marriage. Okay? The Tony Abai Braider Bavo, Ashelu Yodo. What is Ashelu Yodo? Where he did not marry her? Mlami Shitzorch Liado. Who turned over? Amado Bikdusha Yud. I'll leave it. Okay, we'll leave this for next week.